right? And the last thing we can the last thing we can do is that we can write um, the law of motion for uh, employment and unemployment because I derive directly from everything we've seen here. So we can start here with uh, the law of motion for employment. So the law of motion for employment will tell us how employment varies over time. So it's going to say that LT dot, so here's a dot, dinner, uh, the dot that we have here, it's it uh, tells us the time derivative of employment. So you remember that x dot dt for a variable is just the same as dx dt. So that's standard uh, notation for differential equations. So l dot dt is going to be dl dt. Uh, so what is uh, the change in employment? Uh, well, at any point in time, what uh, drives employment up is when uh, unemployed workers find a job. So we'll have F uh, Oh yes, yeah, so I should have said here. So this, I'll call it F of theta t. And this, we'll just call it Q of theta t. So we'll have F of theta t times h minus lt. So here we have the job finding rate. Here we have the number of unemployed uh, workers. So number of unemployed workers times the job finding rate. This is the number of workers who find a job per unit time. So these guys will add to the pool of employed. Uh, but then the pool of employed so is going to increase here and it decreases when you have a job separation. So we have minus lambda, so job separation rate times LT. So this, so this is the number of workers who find job uh, per unit time. And this lambda FT here, this is the number of workers who lose their job uh, per unit time. Okay. Uh, and so the difference between the number of workers who find a job and the number of workers who lose their job, that's going to give us um, the the change in employment over time. Okay, and so L dot T, I should have said also just in terms of interpretation, L dot T is just a, a change in employment per unit time. So of course the change in employment is number of workers who find a job, minus workers who lose their job per unit time. And from this analysis of employment, we can also figure out the law of motion for the unemployment rate, uh, which is going to be key down the line. Um, so the unemployment rate We define it as ut is uh, one minus the employment rate, and the employment rate is lt, the number of workers who have a job divided by h, the size of the labor force. That's our definition. So from that definition, we infer that u dot of t, it's going to just be minus l dot of t divided by h. Okay, and so using the expression for L dot of T, we guess that that's going to be lambda uh, LT divided by H minus F 
theta t uh, 1 minus lt divided by h. Because here what I've done is I've just put a minus in this expression here and divided everything by h. Okay, and but then what I can do is that you notice that lt, sorry, uh, lt divided by h here, that's just 1 minus ut, and 1 minus lt divided by h here, that's just ut. So I can rewrite my law of motion as u dot t. It's uh, lambda 1 minus ut. To, what I want here is to get a differential equation for the unemployment rate, minus f theta t times ut. So that's our law of motion for the unemployment rate. And that's, we're going to study it in more detail. That's going to be very important in the model. Uh, and it just says that, uh, you know, the unemployment rate increases when people lose their job. Here, these are the job separations. And the unemployment rate decreases when people find jobs. These are the job findings. So that's the interpretation. Uh, yeah, so this whole thing is just um, number of people who, who lose their job and minus number of people who find their jobs, that's going to drive the change in the unemployment rate. Uh, 